I have in my hands here the brand new irons of 2024 for Mizuno. Look, absolutely brand new. No better feeling than that is the taking it off. We're going to have a look at the 245, the 243, and the 241 sets of irons. See who they're for. And I'm just going to say, right, there's one big mistake that I think they've made here. Even though these things look absolutely the purest thing I've ever seen, there's one huge mistake going on. Now, with each and every one of this range, let me know which ones you love the look of, because they're beauty. So, I've got in my hand here the Mizuno 243 irons. Now, this is what they say is their compact player's iron. Now, things you'll notice is this sort of slot here, which features on the irons. You can sort of see it's like a, an extra bit of weight that you place in here. Now, you also notice that you've got this sort of brushed look, which is absolutely beautiful. They definitely know how to uh, make irons. Then with this area here, which I always love it when, when brands do this, shiny outer to dull inner gives it a real nice finish. Right, let's start hitting some. Now, what you'll also notice, I've got a seven iron here and a four iron. The sole slightly gets wider as you go into the longer irons. Just essentially helps you get the ball in the air, easier to hit, you know the script, but they do it in a very, very subtle way. Now, one thing that I love it's just this logo here. It's not got anything infilled in it. It's just stamped in there. Look at that there. If I just turn it actually, you can see how this sort of area here, this sort of inlet is an extra piece that's added in. Okay, let's hit some seven irons. Now it's gonna be interesting to see how far these go, how they play, what they feel like. So look at this down at the ball here. The head shape, now for a compact player's iron, looks relatively big. Like the top line wasn't as, I guess, small as I thought it was gonna be. It looks quite, um, well, inviting, quite forgiving in a way. It's not something that you go, oh wow, that is scary. <laughs> but no, for me, this is a very good looking iron. This is the seven iron we've got down here. I might change my opinion as we go to the uh, longer irons, but come on, let's hit some away. Now I've already tested the driver for this year, but I haven't tested the irons. And up until about six months ago, I never ever tested a Mizuno iron. And I was really impressed. These ones are beautiful looking clubs. Now, I'm also expecting it to be a little bit of a softer feel. It's got sort of a copper underlay within that face, which sort of gives it that softer feel. I'm interested to see how that flies and how far it flies. Okay, let's hit a few seven irons away first. Wow, that was beautiful. I mean, I pushed it a little, but that was like really, I don't know, I could really feel like you compressed that golf ball. That was a very nice feeling. Like, let me know, do you think Mizuno are one of the, let's say, premium in terms of quality iron manufacturers? These are beautiful looking clubs. Now, one thing to mention, this sort of slot here isn't present on the eight iron, just as sort of a, a transition as you go from the longer irons into the sort of shorter irons. It's not present, this little slot, micro slot they call it. But yeah, that felt very good. Let's hit that again. We'll look at that distance and the ball speed that I got on that after we've hit this one. That sounds poor, it's like whoosh. The feel of that is what I would describe as Soft, definitely. You can almost feel that ball hitting it and sort of compressing in. Come on, let's go and have a look at these numbers here. Distance wise, I've got seven iron in my hand. 169, 120 ball speed. I mean, 179 finish. Yes, they're not super long, but they're exactly where I would think these irons would place. Now, just to give you an idea of lofts with the 243 range, this is a 32 degree seven iron. So I would say normal, well, not normal, more modern traditional. Okay, let's hit some with the four. Let's now hit some with this four iron. And I've just actually placed it down before we started filming this bit. And I mentioned in the 243 range, it gets wider as you go through the set. Now, one thing that I think is an actual good thing with the four iron, I think it'll give people a little bit more confidence is you can sort of see the back of that. So almost that sort of wider sole is a little bit present as you place that club down behind the ball. Obviously, the more you push your hands forward, the more you can see it, but it's something that is very, very present 
in the bottom of that club. Now, I also say it's weird. That four iron head just looks a little bit smaller in profile than the seven. It's obviously not. It's the illusion and the light in here. But you can definitely see this back a little bit more here. And that's just essentially to help you get the ball in the air and help improve ball speed. Let's hit this one away here. That sounded so good, didn't it? I, hope, I really hope that came across on camera. Look how straight that's gone. That's a beautiful feeling iron. Honestly, I think they do it so well in terms of the look, in terms of the sound, in terms of the feel. They definitely feel soft. That went 209, 209. Let me hit one more with this though. There we go. Feels like a proper iron, this. I mean, I pushed that a little bit, but it's a four iron. Feels like a proper iron. 208, I'm gonna say carry with a four iron. Okay, so this is the 243. Let's move into the next one. We're gonna look at now the 245s, but I actually have the blades to hit too, the 241 range. And these things are what everybody puts across social media, so you're gonna to wanna to see them. Maybe not gonna to wanna to hit them, but let's see. Okay, so I've got the 245s in my hand here. This is the 243 model we just hit. So you can see the differences in these. The first thing you can note is obviously the appearance, but there is some difference in technology. They're faster off the face, easier to launch, and the 245 is now a hollow body design with a suspended tungsten weight. So essentially, like this is all hollow with a weight that's sort of just placed in here within all of those irons. I mean, visually they look a lot different, but you know what? The, the great thing about these is, they look very much like the 241s we're gonna hit shortly, but with a little bit more forgiveness. Now, for me, that is a slight problem because people are gonna look at that, and because it looks the way it does in terms of how good it looks, they're not gonna realize it's a hollow body design. So, like, people are gonna look at that and immediately go, mm, you know what, nah, it's too hard to hit that. When really, well, we'll see in a second, Really, this has got bags of technology that's helping you hit it longer, hit it higher, with some forgiveness. Right, proof's in the pudding. I've got seven iron and four iron again. Let's hit them away. Now, if I was honest with you, these are the irons that I think a lot of people should go down and probably will go down just for the sake of the technology within them. Now, interestingly, to its predecessor, the 245 has a thinner top line, in my opinion, when you place that down. And as you're looking down the club, the 7 iron looks very similar to the 243 we just hit. Now, will it go further? Remember, I hit that 7 iron before on the 243, around about 169, and I'm expecting this will go further because the lofts in this model are two degrees stronger in each of them. So the 7 iron here is 30 degrees, whereas the 243, it is 32. Right, here we go. I'm interested in this, and this might sound different with it being hollow bodied. I felt powerful, that felt strong. I tell you what, I'm leaking them a bit to the right today, aren't I? I think I need to hit a good, another one there. That was a little leaky to the right, but just to put this in perspective, let's show you how far this went on a, on a mediocre one. Six, eight. Now, I'm gonna hit a few more because I'm not happy with that hit. Things you'd anticipate with this iron is it can go a bit higher, a bit easier, and those off-center hits aren't gonna be as impacted as much, just simply because you're looking at an iron here with a hollow body design. And we all know they are more forgiving. That's, that's the idea of them. But I'm gonna go with what I said here. This doesn't look like a hollow body designed, designed iron. Now, for a low handicap player, they're gonna be more inclined to go and buy this because of that. But on the same token, are people who would be looking at a hollow body design discount this? I guess it depends what Mizuno want. Do they want better players going for something more forgiving? Let me know what your thoughts on that are. And what does this look like hollow body to you? I mean, to me, it doesn't. And I, part of me wants to say that's a good thing. Part of me wants to say it's a little bit of a, I don't know, I'm not going to say a mistake, but maybe a bit of a problem. That was pure. That's going to be long. I feel like I hardly put anything into that, honestly. That, these are my favorite so far. These are my favorite irons. I'm even going as far to say as could be some of my favorite irons I've hit this year. Look at that carry. Bear in mind, look. I'm promising you, that was still a seven iron. 
183 carry. Now that is longer than what I'm using right now. Obviously longer than the 243 because it's two degrees differences. Now, as you go through the set, the technology changes slightly. So let's hit some with the four iron now. Now we've got the four iron and the seven iron here. And I want you to have a look at this. Can you see how it changes slightly? Chuck, look where this number is here. Seven iron to four iron getting a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. And this is something you would definitely expect, but something that I think is a little bit more noticeable in the 245 here compared to the 243 models we just hit before. Now, I wanna just talk through a few of the differences as you go through the set. The two iron to eight iron, if you were brave enough to go for a two iron, are all hollow body design. Now, the two iron to the seven iron have a 45 gram suspended tungsten weight. Now, there's a slight transition here. Eight iron has no tungsten weight, and if you were to have nine iron to gap wedge, these are only a partially hollow construction. And you can see on these images here, the difference in that. Now, Mizuno say that these irons have a traditional blade-like appearance. And I wanna reiterate, that's what I think is a bit of the problem in terms of are you gonna get the 15 handicappers going to want to purchase these? Or are they saying the JPX hot metal are more likely for them? I think where we're looking at this one in particular is that player that would usually use a muscle back, not wanting to go for a hollow body design because it might be a bit too chunky, a bit too big. This sort of fits that gap because you've got that traditional blade-like design with, I guess, not the chunkiness, you get all the tech of a hollow headed iron. You can argue it's a bit of genius. Now, have a look at this here. I get it when they're saying traditional blade-like appearance. For, for sort of a hollow headed iron, there's not a lot of offset on that there. Have a look at that head there, if I hold it straight up. Very minimal offset. But don't forget, you've still got all that hollow headed technology, tungsten weight. Again, all these things help you get the ball in the air, be a little bit more forgiving. I'm expecting this is gonna go a lot longer than the four iron I just hit, and I guess feel a bit bigger. I'm gonna echo what I said also, you can start to see, because it is a little bit bigger at that back, you can start to see that here on the 245 too, like you could on the 243. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm really going towards these irons here, really going towards them. All right, let's hit this one. That a noise, it's like whoosh. It's like a, I don't know, I don't know. I can't describe that noise. I need to take another one though, because again, and you know what? Today I'm leaking these a bit out to the right. Still great distance though. So that still went 202. Very similar actually to the other one, but I think it got better in me than that. I think it got better in me. It's mad. I don't really expect more offset on this club. Whoa. That's felt pure. It still feels soft. It still, still feels soft. You know what? I'm really starting to like these. Let's have a look at this distance here. 216, so longer again. 231 finishing. 140 miles an hour ball speed. These are all brilliant numbers. Really, really good numbers. I'm gonna say it. These are some very, very good looking clubs. I'm gonna say, right? Maybe I was a little harsh at the start, so there's a huge problem here. I'm gonna say these are definitely designed at that golfer who was on the fence about going hollow headed because he's still on that traditional look. Why would you not just go for these if you just go Mizuno if you're a low handicap player because you get everything in, in one. Okay, let's hit some of the daddies now, the two, four, ones. These are those blades. I don't, I don't know why, why you would go for them. I've now got the two, four, ones to hit. These are the blades and scary to say the least. I would say this is what you see on social media all the time, these clubs. Now, have a look, right? Interestingly, before I show you the comparison with the others, this is now the 241, but have a look at the 245 there. It's almost like they're the same iron, aren't they? Just one's hollow-headed, one's not. So aesthetics, like, brilliant in terms of you look at it to the 245. You can really see why they're saying they're sort of that compact sort of player's blade-like appearance in the 245 because it literally is copying this model. Now, have a look at this. I've just done this before and I think you should have a look at this. 241, 243, 245. These are all the same iron. You can obviously see the 243 and 45 are very, very similar, but how thin is that four iron? 
I need to hit some away with that four iron. I really, really do, because, I mean, as nice as it looks, I hold that, minimal offset again, look, look, minimal offset, and it just looks very, very scary. I've now got the six iron and the four iron. Now, the center of mass on these clubs is right in the middle, right in the sweet spot. So this is what you've caught, sort of classed as a player's iron, able to maneuver the ball very well, but you're trading off that forgiveness. Now that top line on those scoring irons gets a little bit thinner as you go through the set. So this is four iron, this is six iron, and if you had the eight iron and nine iron here, they get thinner again. And again, that's that sort of player, that's a pro, that's that blade-like appearance. Right, I'm just gonna hit some four irons though, because everyone wants to know how this four iron goes. So let's hit some. Here we go. Wow, oh, that looks so small down at the ball. Oh my God, that top line. That went a lot better than I thought. I nearly was just silent then because that went a lot better than I thought. That's carried around 200 yards. Now, interestingly, like this is a lot weaker lofted. So the other models you had in the 243, 32 degrees in the 79, you had then 30 degrees in the 245, and the 79 in this set, the 241s, is 34 degrees in the 79. Now, I was just thinking then, interestingly, all the brands, the lofts are the same, but the technology changes between each of the models, but it allows people to do sort of a graduated set. You wouldn't be able to do that in this. So you wouldn't be able to go sort of two, four ones in the, in the sort of short irons, then build it up. But I guess you could argue that's why the shape and the technology changes slightly with each of them in order to sort of accommodate that. Like I was saying in the two, four fives, you've got sort of, the hollow headed design and the longer irons with the suspended tungsten weight, you then lose the weight around eight iron and then you have that partially hollow construction in the sort of nine iron and below. Now these are very, very thin looking. That was pure. Look how straight that's just gone. Definitely, definitely a lot harder to hit. I really feel I've got to work hard with these. So let's have a look at these distances. I don't think they're gonna be short, you know. 201, very similar, lower ball speed. 133, 216 total distance. They are a little shorter, but they are a little weaker in loft. And if you don't get it right out of the middle, you're gonna sacrifice a lot of distance. Now, with that center of mass being right behind the middle, that gives it that compact feel, that sort of real idea you've got to sort of hone in on this area a lot more. You can't be very blase with it. I just want to hit one more with this. As much as they're hard to hit, you just want to keep going with them. A little Healy. Yeah, I don't think I'm good enough for these. I don't think I'm good enough. Okay, so which ones would I go for? And if you're looking at these right now going, Alex, these are beautiful looking irons. Which ones are you eyeing up? So let me grab the four irons in each of them again. I'm thinking there's only one option here. I really am. This is where you've got to try and guess which one's the four iron, Alex. Okay, here you go. There's only one option here. For me, like this year, that 245, like it is just the blade but with a hollow head design. And as much as I was critical about that, I think it's absolutely genius in the sense of it's gonna attract a lot of people to go from this all the way into something a lot more forgiving. Now, if you did enjoy this honest review, please do consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the bell. And let me know, out of these right here, which ones would you gain?